Monthly payments on homes in Texas are already coming down. They've fallen three to $500 a month in the last 30 days, and they're not predicted to stop anytime soon. Let's jump right in to learn why this is happening and how low we think it's gonna go. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Marty, also known as The Rebate Guy, and I'm one of the top five real estate professionals in the greater San Antonio and Austin areas, helping hundreds of clients save thousands of dollars when they buy and sell a home with me every single year in Texas. So jumping right into this video, as we talked about it, house prices and payments are coming down. And here's where this is kind of interesting, right? Because they're both falling at the same time right now. We're gonna talk about that briefly, what this means and what I think is coming next. So right now, what you had before were home prices coming down because the rates were so high that the monthly payments were just at a level that people really couldn't afford to buy. And we are big on new home construction in this state. In San Antonio alone, almost half of our new homes that are sold every year, half of them are new construction. And so what was happening was these builders were building, 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 but people couldn't afford to buy the homes that the builders had for sale. So what did the builders do? Well, the first thing that they did was turn to incentive. And what an incentive is, is basically when the builder instead of taking money off the price of the home, they give you money towards your closing costs, right? The incentive. And so what they did was they turned to incentives to basically give you so much money towards your closing costs that you could buy your rate down, buy out your private mortgage insurance, and really get more favorable terms to be able to afford the homes that they were building. And this was great at first because a year and a half ago, you were getting nothing, right? But they quickly ran into a problem where they started maxing out concession. And what that means is that each loan program that the government issues, whether it's conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, they have different limits that are allowed to be contributed by a seller or a third party, like a, a real estate agent who gives a rebate. And so what started happening was they started maxing out these concessions because they were as low as 2% all the way up to 6% and they were getting maxed out, meaning that your rate couldn't go any lower because there was no way to give more money than what was currently being given. So the builders went to maxing concessions. And what this meant was essentially that they gave you so much money towards your closing costs that they actually hit the legal limit that you were allowed to receive towards a loan product, which is anywhere between two to 6% of the loan amount. Again, based on limits that are set by the lending institutions and the federal government, so two to 6%. So what this meant was once they maxed out concessions, you couldn't actually get any more favorable loan terms because there was no more money to give. The only way that you could get a lower rate and better payment was if you yourself had money to continue to buy the rate down uh, once the, the third party concessions were met between what the builder was giving and then agents like myself who give rebates were able to give. So max down concessions. So what did they have to do after that? Lower the price of houses. That's all they, that, that's the only option they had left was, hey, lower the price of the homes. And essentially by lowering the price of the home, that gave people some payment relief. The issue is, is a lot of people think, oh, take money off the house, take money off the house, it's gonna help me. Money off the home is like the last thing you want because it's the least impactful. If I were to take $10,000 off of a home as a seller, I may be saving you seven to $8 a month per thousand. So 70 to 80 bucks a month, maybe nine bucks now that rates are a little bit higher, but it's not much. But if I were to give you $10,000 towards closing costs, that's a rate buy down depending on your credit of either half of a percent or more, which would save you over $100 a month on your payment. So it's actually better to receive the closing costs, right? So again, once they capped out and there was nothing left to do, they lowered the prices of the houses and you got payments that were a little bit lower, but not super great, right? And they just did what they could do and, and that was how it's been. Then you had these big box guys, right? The people with the big money, your DR Hortons, your Lennars, your KB Homes, your Centex Pultis, big national builders. What they did was they went to investors who hold, who hold these loans, the investors who service these loans, and they basically got what they called forward commitments. They paid money today for lower rates 60 days from now, 90 days from now, and they basically blocked out money. So you've got builders like today, when this video was filmed, for example, the average rate six and a half percent in America right now, right? Uh, six and a half, I'm sorry, seven and a half percent. Seven and a half percent is what rates are today. Lennar, if you buy a home from them right now in San Antonio, FHA or VA, they can get you at a four and a half percent 30 year fix. They're three percent lower than what the average par rate is in the States today, which is crazy, right? That's a huge savings. You're talking about a monthly payment savings of probably over $800 a month difference between a seven and a half percent rate and a four and a half percent. It's nuts, right? And again, $800, that's based on a, a sales price of roughly 400,000, right? 
So less impactful if you're a little lower, but still, right? Even at lower price points, three to five hundred dollars a month cheaper than the competitors because of these forward commitments. And so they had the money to spend and they bought these forward commitments. And so these forward commitments are cool because they bought them separately to where those rates are being offered before any of the contribution caps that we are talking about. So you can actually go to one of these builders, get one of these rates and still receive money towards closing costs, making it just a no brainer buy for people in the area, which is why you've seen people doing so well buying with these national builders. So that's a little bit about what's going on there and, and kind of how that worked. But now jumping into the point of what we were talking about, about how things are coming down, everything is getting less expensive, right? So with rates coming down, what that's basically done is that's created more affordability. People are able to buy more home for less money, right? And the builders still have that inventory glut, that backlog that they had of homes that they were being built before. And so you're kind of seeing this double down, right? Sales prices are still low or coming down because they had these homes that were uns unsold, right? They weren't selling. And then you're seeing rates come down as well to create these payments that are extremely, extremely affordable. But I think we're about 30 to 45 days from this changing. We're in December right now. And come January and beyond, I think that you're going to see the inventory start to dry up. I think that people are going to really run and jump on some of these deals that are out there, especially the payments are more affordable and rate relief has kind of come in a little bit. And I think they're going to snatch up all of that at standing inventory. And the issue is that due to, again, the slower sales, the builders don't have a whole lot more of inventory in the pipeline. They're building houses, but they're not building 20 a month, 30 a month like they were before this kind of slow period started. So you're gonna run into a situation where payments are coming down, but inventory is not really there to support the amount of people that are looking to buy. Because if you think about it, there are a lot of people right now in homes that they aren't really happy with. They bought them kind of in the boom. They bought them kind of quick, rates were low. Everyone wanted to buy a house. So they bought homes that maybe actually didn't end up meeting their needs, but it's been tough for them to want to move when their rates were three, three and a half percent. It's, and now they're eight, right? And who would want to do that? But as you see rates start to come down and as you have people like Lennar getting into the fours, it's a lot easier for someone to be like, yes, I'm at a 3.75 right now on a home that doesn't work, but I will take your home Lennar at a four and a half percent for a home that does work. People are willing to make that jump versus again, doubling from a three and a half to a 7%. And so what I expect is as inventory dries down, dries up, rates continue to come down. What you're going to see is builders raising prices again. Um, that's another thing as well. Builders haven't really raised prices much at all in 2023. So they're sitting on tighter compressed margins. I think you're going to see them wanting to grow that a little bit in 24. So you're going to see some big price increases, increased competition because there's going to be more people in the market. Like we talked about that pent up demand of sellers sitting on homes that are going to be selling and want to move up. And I think all of this is going to combine to a little bit of a mini frenzy. Uh, similar to what you kind of saw end of 2020, beginning of 2021. I do think that people have learned a little bit. I don't think that people are going to trample over themselves to buy homes for way over asking price and 80,000 cash or anything like that. I don't think that's going to happen. But I do think that the space is going to get a lot more competitive than it currently is um, when you're looking to buy a home. So anyways, I say all of that to say, let's recap. Right now, prices are low and rates are starting to become low. Really, really good opportunity in the next 30, 60, 90 days to acquire something probably nationwide, but definitely in my market, San Antonio and Austin, right? So again, jumping into that, what are we worried about? We're worried about sellers that are locked into low rates now being enticed to sell their homes at those low rates to buy new ones. Now that new rates are coming down similar to levels that they were currently experiencing. So we're expecting increased market demand, increased competition, higher prices, less homes to choose from. All of that to be said, don't wait, act soon. And again, guys, for any real estate knowledge or questions or information about San Antonio, Austin, or any of the surrounding areas, whether you're an investor, a owner occupant, or someone that just wants more information, please comment below, reach out on my website. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, for more real estate news and topics, you know, like and subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, whether it's homes themselves, lifestyle videos, entertainment in our area, or real estate news such as this. Again, my name is Chris Marty. I look forward to helping you on your next real estate purchase in Texas.